Uh, good evening, everyone. So today's topic is physiology of tear film, tear substitutes, and ocular preservatives, presented by Dr. Nikki Power under the moderation of Dr. Meena Lakshmi Ma'am. Uh, so in our uh, today's class, we'll be uh, we'll be learning tear film physiology, tear film dynamics, artificial tears, and then about preservatives. So the main role of lacrimal system is to establish and maintain a continuous tear film over the ocular surface. The presence of the pre-corneal tear film was first demonstrated by Fisher in 1928 and Rowlett described it as a most superficial six layer of the cornea. Wolf was the first to describe in detail structure of tear film and coined the, coined the term pre-corneal film. So tear film consists of three layers, outer lipid layer, intermediate aqueous layer and the inner mucin layer. As you can see in this diagram, the lipid layer is the outermost, then the aqueous layer, then the mucin layer, mucus layer, which is near to the ocular surface, ocular uh, corneal epithelium. So aqueous component it is mainly uh, secreted by lacrimal gland and accessory lacrimal glands. Mucus component is mainly uh, secreted by goblet cells of conjunctiva, stratified squamous, and epithelium of the cornea and conjunctiva. And lipid component is mainly by membomian glands. So I'll just stop here. So, the so, so uh, sometimes in some books you will see other than the mucus components, you will see mucin also. So both mucus and uh, mucin are interchanged in their terminology. But the broader uh, uh, terminology is the mucus components, in which mucin is the predominant uh, 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 component seen. Okay. Yeah. Where are all the goblet cells seen? Can somebody say two words about goblet cells? Continue, continue. So outer lipid layer. Uh, yes, ma'am. So outer lipid layer, it is the outermost layer, 0.1 micrometer thick, formed from the secretions of membomian and cis glands. Wolf was the first one to describe it as a marginal tear strip extended to the posterior margin of the opening of the membomian gland. So it contains the low polarity lipids like wax, cholesterol, esters, and high polarity lipids like. Uh, uh, Free fatty acids, uh, phospholipids, and yeah. functions. It functions as to prevent the out overflow of the tears, prevents the overflow of the tears, it prevents the evaporation of the tears, and limits the anterior end of the tear fluid reservoir. Aqueous layer, which is the middle layer, formed by the, by the secretions from the main and accessory lacrimal glands of Crossy and Wolfring, constitutes the main bulk of the tear film. Thickness and over the nickel, nickel, where are the accessory lacrimal glands of cross and wolf ring? Ma'am, it's in the fornix. Ma'am, they are in the fornices, ma'am. Superior oh. and inferior fornix. So you have to say both the superior and the inferior fornix. Just don't say fornix. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So thickness over the cornea is 7 to 8 micrometer. Film, it, uh, cover, uh, film covering the cornea is a thinner o than other conjunctiva. Contains the inorganic salts, glucose, urea, enzymes, proteins, and glycoproteins. So, buffering capacity of the tear film is because of the presence of bicarbonate ions and proteins in this layer. Its fun functions are it provides the oxygen to corneal epithelium, washes away the debris and irritants, and it contains antibacterial lysozymes and beta lysines. Mucin layer this is the innermost layer. Secreted mainly by the conjunctival goblet cells and by the stratified squamous cells of the corneal and conjunctival epithelium. 0.2 micrometer thick. It provides the stability uh, to the tear film, converts the hydrophobic corneal epithelium to hydrophilic one, lubricates the ocular and palpable surfaces, provides a slippery coating over the foreign bodies, thereby protecting the cornea and conjunctiva against the abrasive effects of such particles as they move about with the blinking. Uh, just one minute. Uh, can somebody tell me how to see it as a full screen? I'm able to see uh, side by side. Can somebody tell me? Is it in full screen for everybody? Uh, yes, ma'am. It is. It is. Yes. Okay. Put it as. Uh, okay. Continue. Uh, so a, here is the short video. Quality of your tears. The tear film so comprises, tear film comprises three of three layers. The outer lipid layer, outer lipid layer. components like cholesterol, fatty acids, it contains cholesterol, fatty acids. Don't acid. talk, don't talk. It is increased uh, lubricity and prevent evaporation, while other polar lipids can join with some of the mucins 
to create greater cohesivity of the tear film. The middle aqueous layer contains numerous essential nutrients supportive of the ocular surface environment. It is water-based and includes components such as lysozyme, immunoglobulins, sodium, and some soluble mucins. The mucin layer components include silicic acid, hyaluronic acid, and mucins such as MUC 1, 2, 4, 16, and 5AC. Some mucins form a cushioning viscoelastic matrix that both protects the ocular surface and provides the even surface necessary for good vision, whilst other mucins function in a glue-like fashion, securing the tear layer to the microvilli and glycocalyx. The blink mechanism is when the upper lid sweeps down the lower lid rises to meet it. Lids sweep debris away and push the tear layer like a tidal wave. The tear layer compresses to a fraction of its former thickness, absorbing the energy of the blink and replenishing itself evenly across the corneal surface. Within milliseconds of the lid's passage, the tear layer reforms in both structure and function, the energy of the blink harmlessly dissipating. If tears break up too quickly, the mucins no longer function adequately to sustain tear layer cohesion and surface protection. This may be observed clinically as areas of rapid fluorescein breakup. As the tear film breaks up, the lipid and aqueous layers dry up, causing the mucin layer to diffuse away, leaving the ocular surface bare and exposed. This enables an inflammatory cascade Sometimes, irreversible damage occurs, the patient becomes increasingly symptomatic, and often experiences visual disturbance. In treating ocular surface disease, a therapy that allows the ocular environment to return to normal is the first step. Quality of your team. There has been proposed a new tear film model which uh, tells us that the aqueous and the mucus layer they are uh, intric intricated with each other, they are not as a separate. So, recent observations say the mucin exists as a network distributed in the aqueous body of tear film and membrane associated proteins MUC1, 4, 16, as well as secretory mucins MUC5, AC, and MUC7 have been identified at the ocular surface. This is a new model. So the glycocalyx enables uh, the gel-like uh, structure in front of the epithelium. So because it's that is the retention of the tear film over the epithelium. That's because of the presence of the glycocalyx. Yeah. So uh, physical properties of tear film: uh, volume is 4 to 13 microliter, rate of secretion is 1.2 microliter per minute, turnover rate is 18 percent per minute. Refractive index is 1.357, pH is 7 to 7.3, uh, osmotic pressure is 0.9 to 0.95% of NaCl solution that is approximately uh, 300 milliosmoles. Temperature is 35 degrees Celsius at the limbus and 30 degrees Celsius at the center. O2 tension is 40 to 160 mFG. So as we can see here, as compared to plasma, Tear contains more amount of potassium, which is 15 to 29 milliequivalents per liter, and chlorine. And solids total are 1.8 percent, which are less compared to the plasma. Functions of tear film: it forms an almost perfectly smooth optical surface of uh, on the surface of the cornea, C keeps the surface of the cornea and congenital yeah, lubrication, lubrication, transfer of O2. Uh, prevents infection, it uh, washes away the debris and provides pathway for blood, uh, red, white blood cells and per perfect refractive media for the light. So neural aspects of tear production, this sensory pathway and motor pathway. Sensory afferent pathway is from uh, fifth now, trigeminal and motor pathway is autonomic and general. Autonomic is uh, Parasymp parasympathetic uh, division via the pterygopalatine and spinopalatine ganglia and general is by 7th uh, now this is stimulus 5th now and 7th parasympathetic motor it is a lead blink 
and by parasympathetic there is a black and white gland secretion tear secretion and then there is a tear tear so this is the crocodile tears or bogorad's tears this is uncommon consequence of nerve degeneration subsequent to bell's palsy or the damage to the facial nerve in which efferent fibers from the superior salivary nucleus become improperly connected to the nerve axons projected into the lacrimal gland that is tear ducts causing one to shed tears during salivation while smelling foods or eating it is presumed that one would also salivate while crying due to the impro inverse improper connection of the lacrimal nucleus to the salivary glands this was the physiology now uh, tear film dynamics uh, it contains secretion of the tears formation of the tear film retention distribution displacement evaporation uh, then drying and break up of the tear film and dynamic events during bleeding so there is basal and reflex secretion of the tears basal in human eyes the cornea is continuously kept moist and nourished by the basal tears and they are mainly secreted by the accessory lacrimal glands now uh, reflex tears this results from irritation of the eye by foreign particles can also occur by bright light hot and peppery stimuli to the tongue and mouth these reflex tears attempt to wash out irritants that may have come in contact with the eye and this is secreted by mainly by lac main, main lacrimal glands if lacrimal gland malfunction or is damaged in surgery or other fail failure of lacrimal function occurs it is not a serious matter for the accessory glands are enough for the general secretion formation of preocular tear film the conjunctival mucus spreads on the cornea by the action of the lids and on this new surface aqueous layer is spread spontaneously over this superficial lipid layer spreads and pro probably contributing to its stability and retarding evaporation between the blades the outermost layer of the corneal epithelium plus mucopolysaccharides leads to the retention of the tear film precorneal film is stagnant redistribution occurs in the form of bringing of new tear film by the way of marginal tear strip uh, around the margins of the eyelids where there is a constant flow of the tears so this displacement phenomena basically uh, demonstrates that the cornea is covered by the film which has stability compressibility elasticity elasticity and unaffected by the gravity uh, demonstrated by upward movement of the particles in the film on displacing lower eyelid upward over the eyeball what does this mean i actually i wanted you to interpret this ma'am the up, it means that ma'am uh, the up, so the uh, as the eyelids blink the uh, the tear film is displaced uh, downward as well as upward covering the whole cornea so typically it occurs in the upward movement and more with the movement of the lower lid that is why he is saying it's unaffected by the gravity so both the lids have to move and more so the lower lid only and and that's why it says it's unaffected by the gravity okay yes okay. evaporation uh, all lipid film uh, all lipid films including wax esters and cholesterol esters retards evaporation of the water important in low humidity and turbulent air flow near cornea such as exist in windy and air climate so evaporation from the tear film is 10% of the production rate so evaporation is 0.12 microliter per minute as tear production is 1.2 microliter per minute so which is the commonest evaporative dry eye causing some, uh, disease anybody ma'am mgd why uh, because the meibomian gland is dysfunction so the lipid production is less uh, lipid production is not less actually lipid production is altered you may have eggs enhanced uh, free fatty acids also in those conditions all right yes ma'am oh Right. So tears has to cover entire preocular surface to function properly. It is re-established completely after a blink, but has short-lived stability. It takes 15 to 40 seconds for tear film to rupture and dry spots to appear. Then blinking is prevented. Drying of the corneal surface cannot be result of evaporation of water alone, as it takes at least 10 minutes to eliminate whole tear film by drying alone. So Holly and Lem. the mechanism they described uh, in 1973 initially all the tear film thins uniformly by evaporation when thinned out to some uh, to some critical thickness some lipid molecules begin to be attracted by the mucin layer and migrate down to this layer when the mucin layer is sufficiently contaminated by the lipid from the top the mucin becomes hydrophobic and the tear film ruptures as you can see the lipid goes down near to the mucus and 
then the mucus becomes hydrophobic and the breakup starts so uh, dynamic events during blinking was first described by Holly in 1980 as the upper lid moves downward the superficial lipid layer is compressed between the lid edges this will contaminate the mucus and this lipid uh, contaminated mucus is rolled up in a thread like shape and dragged into the lower fornix when eye opens first the lipid spreads in the form of mono layer against the upper eyelid then the spreading of the excess lipid follows and in about 1 second multi molecular lipid layer is The spreading lipid breaks some aqueous tears with it, thereby thickening the tear film. So the reason why he is giving an introduction to all this is many of these drugs will need to be modified based on what kind of dry eye, and many times it's a combination of the tear film uh, problems. So that's why he is giving you an overview of the tear film. Okay, go ahead. So you can just stop here and instead of say, just tell what actually happens in this while closing and while it's open. Yeah, when the eyelids closes, the there is uh, the uh, tear film is brought in the like uh, in between those lids, and uh, then then when it opens, the first thin mono layer is of the uh, lipid is formed, and then within one second, the multi multi molecular lipid layer is formed, and as the lipid is uh, spreading. it drags the aqueous from the uh, upper and lower margins of the eye and then the thick layer is of tear film is formed elimination of tears the the lacrimal fluid uh, it goes towards the marginal tear strip along the lid margins both upper and lower and then it drains into the lac la, la, lacus lacrimus which is near to the inner canthus and from there it passes to the lacrimal apparatus and then to the nasal cavity artificial tear substitutes so these are the eye drops used to relieve dryness and irritation of the ocular surfaces in 1872 george ebers a german egyptologist discovered a collection of egyptian medical recipes later called as ebers papyrus and they were used as eye baths in the 16th century and they were called polyrium latin as eye wash followed by tear substitutes that were saline based isotonic or hypotonic solutions with preservatives then notably benzalkonium chloride in the 1980s natural polymers and synthetic polymers were integrated in artificial tear formulations so one of the reason why we are disc uh, discussing tear film substitutes is the tear film industry itself is a multi million dollar uh, industry so the pharma company is going to keep making new uh, variations of the Uh, tear film uh, substitutes and you need to have an idea as to what are the basic uh, qualities of a tear film after that only you will understand what is a tear film uh, tear uh, substitute so if the if the question comes lubricants you will write artificial tears but if you if you get a question saying tear substitutes you also need to write in addition to artificial tears uh, tear uh, modifying agents those are um, cyclosporin tacrolimus liftigraph so read about other things which modify the ocular surface uh, uh, structure all right did you uh, did you understand what i'm saying so if you get tear substitutes you need to mention more of uh, the tear modifying agents as well like anti inflammatory agents and uh, uh, those which increase tear production also did you get it yes ma'am yeah so indications of tear substitutes symptoms such as dryness grittiness must injure discharge transient blurring of vision redness casting of the lids so aim of using tear substitute is to increase what are the, the common indications of uh, giving artificial tears this is one of the most uh, commonly used or abused drug can anybody tell me three or four indications which are which are uh, which are the correct in, uh, not uh, the just to send away the patient but the indications that you would want to give anybody Three or four conditions where you will not, where you will have to give. Ma'am, eye strain due to continuous uh, computer vision syndrome. Yes. Then associated with uh, other autoimmune disorders which involve the secretory glands like uh, Sjogren's syndrome. Only you are there, is it? The rest of uh, the rest all cannot talk, is it? Ma'am, uh, whenever uh, we are suspecting any uh, condition of. Uh, Uh, tear film abnormality due to any lipid abnormality like uh, chronic vasculitis or any uh, uh, deficiency in uh, aqueous deficiency disorders like uh, keratoconjunctivitis sicca or uh, so um, i am asking you common clinical care conditions where you will give an artificial tear one is post refractive surgery 
One okay. second post cataract surgery, patients using contact lenses, <coughs> patients having uh, uh, myobin glasses, things like that. Not just uh, what uh, what is underlying the cause of giving the. Okay. Yeah, not for patients with infective keratitis. Okay, not for end of thalamitis. Th these are not the indications of artificial tears, uveitis. These are all not the indications. Uh, corneal abrasion. Computer vision syndrome, post LASIK, post cataract. These are few proper conditions for end usage of contact lenses. Yes, go ahead. So, what is an ideal tear substitute? It should be isotonic. Osmolality should be 300 milliosmoles per liter. pH should be between 6.5 to 7.6. Compatible with the natural components of tears. Should lower the surface tension of tear film. Should aid in formation of hydrophilic layer that enhances the tear volume. Should have longer duration of action. Should contain preservatives that poses minimal risk to the epithelium. Products intended for prevent frequent installation should be preservative free. And so, none of none so the, in the tear osmolarity, some of the tears uh, all uh, are all tear substitutes uh, uh, isotonic. No, ma'am. So are, some are some are hypotonic. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So reducing the for reducing the hyperosmolarity, you can have some agents which are hypotonic, and these are typically like tears natural, which is present in hypotonic uh, agents. I think. So, yeah. so tears are should were uh, developed in generations. Like first, it, uh, saline based isotonic hypotonic solution with preservatives, notably uh, benzyl ponium chloride. They were short acting and needed frequent reapplication. Then the so short acting means short retention also. Okay, so use those terms interchangeably. Shorter retention. Shorter that is why these are short, shorter retention. All right. Okay. Yes, and uh, then they added natural and synthetic polymers to that, such as polyvinyl alcohol, povidone, polysorbate, AT, HP, GOR. And with gentler preservatives or preservative free products, these agents are of thicker viscosity or a gel forming nature and afford higher retention times. Uh, then they incorporated hyaluronic acid, it has a natural bioadhesive properties and provides longer hydration and has protective effects on corneal epithelium. So, this is a very important slide where he has put up the four generations of the tear substitute. But is this FDA approved uh, classification? Uh, no, ma'am. Okay, where did you get this from? I have sent you the link. Okay, go ahead. You have to write the reference from where you got it. That's why I'm asking you. Uh, so there was further there was addition of liquid oil in water non animals emulsions. So they address the evaporation concern of the other tier replacements. Uh, replenish the lipid layer. They have been shown to have a long residence time in the tear film. They reduce the tear, tear evaporation rate, improve the signs and symptoms of dry eye, improve the structure of lipid layer, and improve diagnostic test results, particularly the Shermo score and tear breakup time. So, lipid but oil nano emulsion, uh, emulsion itself can be a short notes uh, for you. So, I, I will ask everybody to read a little more about this oil and water combination emulsions, which, which has more bioavailability, which can make the uh, place more uh, hydrophilic and have lesser uh, toxicity. So, these are the upcoming agents in uh, tear, fill, tear uh, lubricants. So, what are the contents of artificial tears? Uh, demulsants. Demulsants are higher molecular weight. What, what, is the, what, is the, what is the demulsant here? Why are you talking about demulsant in your slide now? You finished your uh, uh, classification, right? Yes, ma'am. So, so, you, you, you in the, here where you will say, that the demulsants are the active uh, active agent of the artificial tears. The rest of the things are to maintain its pH and uh, uh, IPO uh, uh, or the uh, osmolality are not the active. This is the active agent for the tear film. So, this is further classified into these four agents. Yes, so the FDA, uh, demulsant is the active agent of the tear films, which is further classified into cellulose derivatives, dextran, gelatin and polyols. Uh, they have higher molecular weight, water soluble, and a mucilaginous soothing polymer that mimic mucin and act to lubricate, protect, provide viscosity to eye drops. They, to pro they provide uh, proper consistency, viscosity, comfort, and moisturization. 
so commonly available uh, divisions are like cellulose ethers carboxy methyl cellulose hydroxy propyl methyl cellulose uh, these are viscoelastic polysaccharides they increase the viscosity of tears and also co-formulated with electrolytes as hypotonic solutions what is the advantage they have they have good retention the their viscosity is not affected by blinking and carboxy methyl cellulose forms complex with the metabolites debris in the tears and helps in elimination available as sustained release tear inserts also so what so, is the lowest uh, uh, carboxy methyl cellulose concentration and uh, what is the disadvantage of using uh, higher concentration carboxy methyl cellulose do you have an idea so the lowest concentration which is available is 0.25 and it, and beyond 1% it actually causes blurring when you when you add it because it uh, it blurs the tear film all right yes ma'am what is refreshed tears how much is it um, 0.5% carboxy methyl so I, i will ask you whenever you write prescription on your case presentations you will only mention the uh, active agent and not write refreshed tears many times i see people write refreshed tears and things it's that's not the correct term okay. so what is the last agent there gentil gel ma'am um, this is hydroxy propyl methyl hpmc ma'am yes but what is it it's otherwise known as it's a thicker agent it is known as hypromellose right yeah. it's a very thick gel like formulation the hpmc hmc hpc they these are too viscous they must be mixed with other compounds for the installation like uh, the other dimensions are dextran 70.1% uh, low molecular weight and low viscosity hydrophilic polymer that increase the mechanical strength of the tear film only effective when used with other agents gelatin 0.01% though it is a demulsion it is rarely used in ophthalmic demulsion common application of the gelatin is in the form of intracanalicular implants to retard the tear drainage in dry eye patients it is an ingredient in some oral capsules containing omega 3 fatty acids polyols this is first is a glycerin 0.221% this demulsion lubricate as well as humectant Glycerin has the additional properties of promoting epithelial cell growth, decrease the damaging effects of high osmolarity on the ocular surface. Polyethylene glycol 300.221 percent. Uh, it forms a protective layer over mucous membrane to relieve inflammation or irritation and to preserve the ocular surface microenvironment. So you have to write uh, three divisions as uh, one is uh, carboxy methyl cellulose or cellulose derivatives, then the the second important is the polyol group of uh, artificial tear substitutes in which glycerin and polyethylene peg it's known as peg what is written is polyethylene glycol is actually a very um, a protective uh, agent uh, glycerin is also being used it's, it's in in few of the uh, formulations so poly polyols the carboxy methyl cellulose and the sodium hyaluronate these are the main agents in the lubricating thing dextran and gelatin are less used so at least remember the headings of the uh, lubricant classification uh, yes ma'am polyol polyvinyl alcohol and low viscosity but optimal wetting characteristics short retention time does not mix well so with what other what is the i'm just i'm going to ask you what is the advantage polyvinyl of polyvinyl alcohol. alcohol being low viscous or any agent being low viscous or high viscous what is the advantage and disadvantage when you read low viscous and high viscous what will you understand interpret interpret those uh, words and the viscosity no is less the retention time the retention time is less so also even if it is low is yeah when it is low viscous also it can flow out of the bottle easily remember that some of them exist in low viscous in the bottle but on contact with the tear film because of certain uh, molecular structure change on contact with the tear film they become highly viscous so they don't remain they have they bought out newer uh, combinations where their viscosity itself can change so that's what you so usually use term is viscosity but certain textbooks will also give you viscoelasticity i think i would uh, urge you to keep to the term viscosity itself yes ma'am uh, hydroxy propyl gor hp gor has been used as a gelling agent in the solution containing glycol 4 and 4 Proly- so what is what the, what did I tell you this agent is HB gor? Where does this actually fit in? 
this uh, polyethylene uh, the polypropylene glycol is actually the this is actually the to make it more stable okay this is not a tear film substitute itself these are agents added to the tear film uh, substitutes sure. the gore this is the another uh, short note which can come is the gore preparation of the tear film lubricants so instead of keeping it as instead of keeping it as a um, soluble uh, agent where it, the retention time will reduce it increases the retention time by converting into a gel okay if this particular drop is very interesting because it has sorbitol and borate in in the bottle formulation it remains as a combination of sorbitol and borate but when it comes into contact with the tear film the hb gore i think it uh, binds with the borate and it forms a gel like structure so this is this is why this is a very interesting drop in which it converts the aqueous into a gel like formulation that is why this has all the good benefits of osmo protection uh, uh, it has uh, cell regenerative capacity in addition to its uh, tear film other tear film uh, advantages so read a little bit about hp gore the main activations are emollients they usually such as fat oil which is applied locally to eyelids to protect or soften tissues and to prevent drying and cracking they function to seal in existing moisture such oil provides lubrication and are intended to be soothing uh, lanolin preparations they divide into lanolin preparations and oleaginous preparations are these commonly used yes, is, it, is it, do we have it, do we have these uh, uh, preparations no ma'am not commonly used okay that's what i want you to say give a prompt on how people will remember your presentation so these are less common yes, where uh, uh, these are some so again uh, the formulations of lipid vary from other formulations where you have only uh, uh, topical drops whereas here you have better ways of instilling these medications so some of them are what what do you uh, what are the ways in which uh, you know, lipid la- lipid uh, formulations are available so other main components of artificial tear is hyaluronic acid it is uh, binds multiples of its way so this should water find a, this should actually find a place next to your demulsion in the demulsion in the newer com, in the newer uh, uh, artificial uh, tear substitutes which is not there in the fda classifications are these two components hyaluronic acid and sodium hyaluronic because it's very confusing to actually classify tear film substitutes no it's not given anywhere very clearly so at least you can put it up little clearly these are not other main constituents other main components of artificial tears are what the electrolytes the preservatives and the ions right so these are the other components these these two come find a place in the polymer groups see the other polymers which are known what what under what heading will you write hyaluronic acid what are they constants of glycoso amino glycans these are derivatives of glycoso amino glycans so remember it like that this one it adheres to the ocular surface to stabilize the thickness of the tear film and sodium hyaluronate is a derivative of hyaluronic acid it is produced naturally in the eye in response to ocular damage so hydrophilic polymer plays an important role in corneal wound healing and helps control localized inflammation uh this again has a lot of osmo protection in its uh, ability to actually mute the uh, the mechanism where there is uh, ocular inflammation in the presence of dry eye this actually also increases the amount of goblet cells in the conjunctiva in long term studies these agents act by precipitating proteins and help to clear mucus from the ocular surface example is zinc sulfate 0.25% So some inactive ingredients of the tear film uh, substitutes are sorbitol. It lowers the viscosity of the gelling agents such as HP Gore and HP MC. Uh, these are too viscous to instill directly on the eye. Sorbitol dissipates quickly after installation, allowing the solution to be more viscous than it is in the bottles. L-carnitine and erythritol. These are osmo protectants and are absorbed by dehydrated cells. that they promote hydration and prevents cell shrinkage and inflammation so they are the third part is preservatives 
so these are necessary multi dose containers to inhibit contamination by potentially pathogenic microorganisms uh bacterial contamination of a solution can occur if it is used at least twice daily for 1 to 2 weeks and the preservatives also help in prolonging shelf life of the active drug by preventing biodegradation so preservative free drugs in multi dose containers are more at risk of contamination especially in elderly patients uh, there are various types of preservatives used such as detergent type oxidizing type ionic buffer type preservatives so most commonly available used is benzalkonium chloride the gold standard of preservative since it was first introduced in 1940s and still remain the most common antimicrobial preservative the detergent type preservative it alters the permeability of the microbial cell membranes addition to the antibiotic solution further enhances the antibacterial actions of the antibiotic it improves the ocular penetration of the drug in the translator drug delivery system without producing toxic reactions it is well tolerated up to concentration of 0.05% doesn't appear to have significant adverse effects unless its frequency of use exceeds 4 to 6 times daily it induces atp release and myosin light chain dephosphorylation in corneal epithelial cells so the dephosphorylation and impaired contraction of the actin affects the normal cytoskeletal functions necessary for the maintenance of epithelial barrier integrity what are the drugs which have benzalkonium chloride usual other than lubricants anti glaucoma medications so typically anti glaucoma what are the advantages of benzalkonium chloride he saying the toxicity what is the advantage of it, it itself is a um, has anti microbial agent anti microbial agent also it allows the permeation of the drug by causing a disruption between intercellular junction right so not all is bad about benzalkonium chloride uh topical medications uh, even antibiotics do have benzalkonium chloride that's why frequency if you increase of even commercial preparations you may get you may end up with uh, toxicity of the drug because predominantly they have benzalkonium chloride okay the ones with antibiotic are far, uh, are a little lesser in concentration than the ones in the lubricants so its adverse effects are most likely to be seen in patients of dry eye syndrome because these patients have already diminished secretions of natural tears and uh, benzalkonium in the drop instilled is not diluted sufficiently leading to stronger concentration than expected normally other uh, preservatives are like sorbic acid it interferes with the microbial cellular function by causing acidification so depletes the microbial cell energy stores by activating energy dependent ion pumps chlorbutanol it is alcohol based detergent preservative uh, having broad spectrum antimicrobial action uh, it may cause corneal epithelial damage and ocular irritation polyquaternium it is polymeric quaternary ammonium antimicrobial preservative derived from benzalkonium It is a detergent type preservative, and it can significantly decrease conjunctival goblet cells and the aqueous tear film production. It irritates disodium. It is a chelating agent and can help preserve a solution by binding to small amount of heavy metals. It also so helps. Now, what are the two common agents which are used as preservative up to now that you have seen? Benzalkonium. Yes, and. And second important thing even if you forget sorbitol and all you have to remember polycortarin yes. sodium perborate oxidative type uh, on coming in contact with aqueous environment it releases hydrogen peroxide which is potent microbicidal making this preservative effective at low concentration has good uh, antibacterial and antifungal activity so zia is an ionic buffer preservative it is composed of boric acid propylene glycol sorbitol and zinc chloride the distinguishing feature is that it actively acts as a preservative in the container but becomes inactive after installation into the eye when it is exposed to cations that are normally encountered in the tear film of the eye so oxidizing type they are disappearing preservatives example are stabilized oxychloro complex sodium perborate so advantage is that a uh, small these are small molecules so therefore have a smaller risk of causing ocular damage 
they are very low what toxic. does sodium perborate do what does stabilized oxychloro complex do sodium perborate dissipates into hydrogen peroxide yes ma'am correct what happens to the other one stabilized oxychloro complex what does it become so in the acidic pairs it becomes chlorine dioxide all right and know what are the end products of this which are active at least new agent such as ocular inserts lacquer insert is a water soluble polymeric once daily sustained release insert a cylindrical rod containing 5 mg of hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose placed in lower filled sac it imbibes fluid and swells and lasts for 12 to 24 hours and it is designed as an adjunct especially for patients using multiple tier substitutes New lubricant eye gel such as Carbopal 980 is a gelling agent which transforms from gel to liquid upon contact with the ocular tissue. Available as a 10 ml. There are some natural tear substitute uh, used such as Autologous Serum, so second line therapy for the dry eye. Uh, natural tears have components like epithelial growth factor, fibronectin, vitamin A, which support epithelial cell growth. Also, our serum contains more vitamin A, lysozymes, transforming growth factor beta carbonating IgA, epithelial growth factor vitamin C, than tears. Indications such as Zobrin syndrome, graft versus root disease, state of course allergenic bone marrow transplantation, neurotroph neurotrophic keratitis, persistent epithelial defects, state of course lassie with dry eyes. Disadvantage is that the therapy is not possible if blood donation is contraindicated. There is no consensus presently regarding a standardized production method. High concentration of TGF beta, which has shown to inhibit epithelial cell proliferation, must be kept in freezer. Stability of growth factors uh, within uh, artificial substitute after six months storage is unknown. Uh, complications such as conjunctivitis, candida infections, coagulase negative staphylococcus, keratitis, limbitis are important. high cost of production finger prick autologous blood fresh autologous blood is obtained by pricking one's finger tip and applying the blood in the lower forms this alternative low cost ready less accessible treatment for dry eye syndrome advantages treatment cost is limited to the purchase of wipes and lancet to perform regular finger pricks there is no production steps are no production steps are required and there is no delay before starting any treatment And no storage is necessary. These are my references. Thank you.